Breton law was not willingly abandoned by the Irish people. It was forcefully replaced by the English crown's imposition of common law. This process was solidified in the 17th century when the native Irish landholding class, who had been the primary patrons and enforcers of Breton law, was dispossessed of their lands over several generations. By acknowledging the historical context and the manner in which Breton law was displaced, we can better appreciate the resilience of the Irish legal tradition and the importance of continued research to enhance our understanding of this remarkable legal code. The historical context of the loss and fragmentation of information on Breton law is rooted in Ireland's tumultuous past, marked by invasions, colonisation and cultural upheaval. The Breton law, or the native Irish legal system, was well established and deeply ingrained in Irish society before the arrival of the Anglo-Normans in the 12th century. However, the Anglo-Norman invasion and the subsequent English colonisation of Ireland resulted in the imposition of the English Crown Common Law and a concerted effort to suppress and marginalise the native Irish Brehan Law. The cultural impact of English rule in Ireland was significant as English settlers and rulers sought to eliminate Irish culture, language and traditions and this naturally included the Brehan Law legal system. The destruction and loss of historical records, legal manuscripts and other important documents occurred as a result of wars, rebellions, and the general chaos that accompanied centuries of foreign rule. Furthermore, the decline in the use of the Irish language under English rule led to a decrease in the number of people capable of reading and understanding the Old Irish of the original Breton texts. As a result of these historical factors, the information available on Breton law is imperfect and fragmented. However, the surviving text and documents offer a glimpse into the complexity and sophistication of this legal system. By acknowledging the historical context and the manner in which Brehan law was displaced, we can better appreciate the resilience of the Irish legal tradition and the importance of continued research to enhance our understanding of this remarkable legal system. So here are eight core challenges with the Brehan law and how to address them. Number one, limited historical sources. The problem is early Irish law relies on manuscripts which may not cover all aspects or be completely accurate. And this can be addressed by the fact that while there's probably a lot missing, researchers can still draw valuable insights from a still very large volume of existing manuscripts. Interdisciplinary collaboration with archaeology, linguistics, mythology and other historical accounts can help piece together a more comprehensive understanding of Breton law. For all that was lost, so much still remains and this is perhaps an underappreciated blessing. Number two, language barriers. The problem is Breton law texts were written in Old and Middle Irish, making interpretation and translation very challenging. One way to address this is to acknowledge that yes, while the Old Irish presents challenges for modern researchers, there are still scholars proficient in the language who could contribute to the understanding of Breton law. Additionally, continued advancements in language tools and resources could facilitate more accurate translations and interpretations. For example, the power of AI could now be harnessed to train a large language model on the extant knowledge of Old Irish. Manuscripts could then be scanned using OCR technology and the language challenge would be pretty close to being resolved. Number three, cultural context. The problem is trying to understand the intricacies of early Irish society, which is necessary to interpret the law accurately. And a lot of that cultural context has been lost. Although the cultural context of early Irish society may be difficult to fully grasp, mythology, folklore and other available resources can help us to illuminate these societal norms and values. We can also compare Brehan law to other contemporary legal systems and this may provide valuable insights into the unique aspects of early Irish society. So in other words, it's not unreasonable to infer 
some characteristics of the Breton law by taking a wider, more holistic view, not just of early Irish culture and society, but of comparative legal systems as well. The fourth problem is how the law changes over time. Irish law evolved over centuries, and the characteristics of the law reflect the times in which they were written. Distinguishing the difference between these periods and the significance of the principles in each period can be challenging. However, studying the evolution of Breton law over time can also be beneficial because it offers a unique opportunity to understand the dynamics of legal and social change. Researchers can trace how various influences such as cultural shifts, political upheavals and religious transformations impacted the development of the law. Number five, the influence of Christianity on the early Irish native law. So the arrival of Christianity brought a whole new set of influences and values to the island of Ireland. And since all of the manuscripts were written in the post-Christian period, it can sometimes be hard to separate the original Breton law from later adaptations. But while the arrival of Christianity in Ireland impacted the legal system, researchers can still examine pre-Christian Breton law by focusing on the earlier texts and practices using linguistic evidence. They can also focus on the understanding the interaction uh, between Breton law and Christianity. And this can provide important insights into the process of legal adaptation and syncretism. It must also be said was it not for the coming of Christianity and the love of writing that shortly followed? Our knowledge today of the Breton law, the workings of early Irish society, and yes, even the mythologies themselves, might have been entirely lost. The Irish Christian monks were, after all, Irish themselves. Number six, the fragmented political landscape of Ireland. Ireland's decentralized structure led to variations in law across tribes and variations in implementation and enforcement. However, the decentralized structure of Ireland may have led to variations in law implementation and enforcement, but this could also be seen as a strength. It offers the opportunity to study how different regions adapted and interpreted the law, revealing a characteristic flexibility and adaptability of the early Irish legal system. This study revealed a distinction in two key types of law in effect in early Ireland. There was the Ordus and Kine law. This is the distinction between local custom and universal law, such as for crimes of murder and theft, for so on. The key characteristic of Irish law is an example of a pluralistic system that allowed for experimentation and the evolution of law from local customs. This is why and how does the, the law was pluralistic and rested with the people. Under the order of this, local customs could evolve and establish the force of law over time. The seventh problem is dealing with potential biases in academic commentary. Early legal scholars may have had biases or personal interests that influenced their accounts of the legal system. But simply recognizing and accounting for potential biases in this early scholarship is crucial for accurate interpretation. Being aware of this is enough to guard ourselves and to encourage us to have more critical thought. Through careful examination of the biases, Researchers can challenge assumptions and conduct more nuanced analysis, resulting in a more precise understanding of early Irish law. The biases of the 19th and early 20th century writers, for example, whether of Anglo or Gaelic descent, are quite evident. Anglo writers often belittled Breton law as primitive, while Gaelic writers idealised Ireland's golden age. Awareness of these biases is crucial for conducting a thorough and objective analysis of the Breton law. And problem number eight relates to the loss of information. 
Over time, some documents and knowledge about Breton law may have been lost or destroyed, which creates gaps in our understanding. But despite the loss or destruction of some information regarding Breton law over time, researchers can still rely on available sources and interdisciplinary methods to create a comprehensive understanding of the legal system. This reconstruction process also enables the identification of knowledge gaps and stimulates further research, leading to a more profound comprehension of early Irish law.